Welcome back to the beautiful white stable barns here at Riverside Farm. Um, with me, it's kind of like Captain Planet, Earth, Wind, Fire, Spirit, <laughs> or... Who, who's who? Uh, <laughs> You're all the above, am I? Oh, cool. Earth, Wind. What does that make me? Water? I don't know. Yeah, let's go with it. Okay, we're Free got flowing. It. Anyways, Colonel Nye, Dell, Johnny, we have Marion, and um, we are traveling with Joe to, like, the coolest place palace school in China that honors, well, kind of all the things I'm really into, but I'll save those wonderful secrets for you guys to listen to. We are here for Spartan Up the Podcast and Tin Jin Yang with Master Sheng and Linda Fung. And as you know, I am on the search for the keys to life, uh, perseverance, resilience, purpose. And, and so we are at this school that's 15 years old, but I guess it's carrying 5,000 years of culture yes. behind it. What's the purpose of the school? The mission of the school is to help each and every one of us to harmonize our physical, mental, and spiritual being that heaven, earth, and human beings would live in a very harmonious state for better health and better state of mind so we can live a much, much better and healthier life. How do you develop um, resiliency and grit? In, in, the, in the show that we just saw and, and the speakers that spoke, they talk about, um, and, and I was trying to decipher because I don't speak Mandarin, but they talk about overcoming resilience. We're developing yeah. skills here to overcome it's resilience, it's obstacles, grit. How, how, do you, um, how do you do that? To answer your question, the school had, uh, employed several methods to how to teach the kids or parents or adults. So, they, so the school teaches parents and, and children? And children, because a lot of times children's problems are parents' problems. That's why I'm here. I'm studying. He said, the kids can learn, but parents cannot not learn. Because of, because they learn something in the school, but then go home and have and a And they bad... go back to your bad, normal habits. And the school try very hard to try to help them to establish very good habits in life. Right. And you go back and you do the same thing. So parents must learn, teachers and staff have to learn. But one of the things, uh, through a few methods, uh, very, in a, <clears throat> very systematic and physical and mental. First of all, studying of Chinese, uh, of literature, world classics and wisdom teachings from sages through understanding intellectually the philosophy and teachings of these wise wisdom um, from sages you intellectually hopefully understand why we have to behave and why we have to do things certain ways so there was books that have last and theories that have lasted the test of time five thousand years five, only five thousand years yeah. okay so it's statistically historically right that those people who have understood, they write it down, and that's why we study these, um, that's why the preservation of cultural heritage is so important. So we just study the classics. The next thing is through uh, learning wushu, martial arts, through tai chi, through shaolin, physical training. Through that, you understand how the body works. When you feel good, or not feel good. Why don't you feel good? It's because your body is not in harmony. <clears throat> Things are not working. So through that, particularly in Tai Chi, the move, the yin and the yang, and the balance, once your body is balanced in a good state, you feel very good. So through the physical experience and ex experiential experience, you begin to also learn that why do I have to practice? Why do I have to exercise? Because it's very important for the body to stay in a healthy state. So that's number two. Even though it's uncomfortable. And, and maybe not something that you um, aspire to do when you wake up. Exactly. But that's why consistency, and even when you don't like it, when it feels uncomfortable, and if you keep that, <clears throat> change that into a good habit, one day you reach that amazing state that, ah, oh, now I know why this is so good for me. 
but you need teachers there to guide. And that's why this environment here provides a very strict discipline that you have to get up. You have to do your exercise, whether you like it or not. Um, so uh, the consistency, the environment, the teachers help you to get out of those days when you don't like to do it. Sure. Um, so that's, uh, that's the second one. The third one is medicine. And we talk about Chinese medicine. Chinese medicine uh, talks a lot, a lot about um, balancing <clears throat> again. Balancing from understanding the weather, the four seasons, how you should eat, how you should dress, how you should behave in different seasons. And according to all the meridians, which organ paired with which organ. For example, just to give you an eye problem, the mother of eye, eye is a manifestation of your liver. So a lot of times the problem that people think is eye actually comes from liver. When you don't deal, liver is a mother of eyes. So every organ in the body has a pairing organ and everything is related. When your heart, you're angry is because your kidneys are not doing well. Kidney is a water. It has to go and just put out the fire. So it has, everything has to work in harmony. One thing is out of line, the domino theory happens. So Chinese medicine is in, uh, conducive to Health, health, healthy lifestyle. Oh, well, well, well. Yeah, and then the next thing is agriculture, and their agriculture is organic farming. Why organic farming? We have to learn to love Mother Earth. We are putting so much toxin into the crops, into the land, which actually goes back to our body. It's not that because you really truly love the earth, but what you are getting out from the earth is what you're going to be put back in your body. And we just think that oh, it doesn't matter. We kill the put pesticides and. To kill as many insects and, and will grow a lot more crops but in the end you're just damaging yourself which in turn does is not good so organic farming another thing is about cycle of life this place here teaches you about cycle of life when you understand there's growth birth bearing fruit until withering away you understand life how you face life so when you see things this is nature we as human beings don't get so attached to certain things or fear. And this is what heaven and earth, you do agriculture, you understand the seasons. You have to work, you can't work against the seasons. Unfortunately now with technology, we can grow anything in any environment. But a lot of times we know there's consequences that come out of that. The last one is arts. Arts is able to help you to um, bring pleasure and wonderful experience in life. So we have calligraphy, we have machine, we have instruments, they have chess that helps you also to enjoy the beauty in life. So through these five areas that you learn how to deal with life's difficulties. But most important I'll add to it, which is all the kids here, they learn all these things, but the lesson is when they make mistakes. Because while they're practicing all this, while they're performing, problems happen because this didn't work. The teacher was angry. I didn't get the things I want. My, my partner was not doing his work. Actually, that's the difficulty how they face. So I name all these areas. It's only a tool. But the real lesson comes in when they make mistakes. Then they come in. How to help them to resolve the conflicts. So, so one of the big uh, discussions now in education is uh, helicopter parenting or parents that come in and scoop in and solve the problem right at the at that moment of despair. But actually it sounds like in this particular school, you, you seek out the problems and, and, and enjoy purposeful suffering. Anytime there's a problem there, then there's a class. They'll call the class and they'll write it up and they say, what do you think is the best way to resolve this problem? Helicopter parenting, we use our experience, what we think is right or wrong. As a parent. As, yes, as a parent, as our own perspective to, to help them. Okay, this school here, we put the problem out. Every kid, we say, if someone beat the hell out of you, what are you gonna do? So each kid will have a way of resolving this. So this is one way of resolving. And then the teachers say, okay, we've been studying this book, for example, the Analects of Confucius. How does Confucius resolve his problems? Because it's very clear. They have all sorts of problems. Jealousy, anger, very clear. From 5,000 years ago, yes. same problems existed then yes. that existed. <laughs> because it would never be dated because it's human nature. Right. Here we teach human nature, our human nature hasn't, um, there's no evolution, not much compared to a lot of other things. Sure. So we'll read, how do Confucius, how, how do Lao Tzu resolve these problems? Right. 
So we study that. And then, then we'll go and say, your solution of what we think is right, does it resolve it? Most of the times, not only not resolve it, but actually magnify the problem and cause more problems. So through understanding that the kids understand this is the way we should behave, the way we are behaving is not right, but let's go try the next time when this thing happens again. Hopefully we can try to be aware, maybe you can't deal with it straight away, but you're aware that this is one of the solutions that you can use to resolve conflicts in life. So the teachers are there to use many examples of these terrible uh, incidents at times to teach them. These are the moments of teaching. This is what education is about. Shine a light on the obstacle, don't hide it. Because in life, a lot of times you learn a tool to be better. But what's the use of getting to be the top of the class? So you can brag about it, so people hate you more, or you feel you're confident. That's also very important. But a lot of times with the, the obstacles, that's the part when you can't get out of it. When you when you really Your backs against the wall. Yeah, and, and you feel I can't get out of this vicious cycle. This is the part that usually when even the kids now facing, parents facing. So this school here is helping you to resolve these conflicts and enjoy the victorious, glorious moments, which is important. When you get through the obstacles. But hopefully in life, you don't have too many problems. Unfortunately, life always gives you challenges, right? So right. daily moments, so this is what they do here. I hope you're not sitting still while you listen. If you are, you better get a burpee break in. You know, we launched Spartan Up, the book, a couple of years ago. It was a huge success. It hit number two New York Times bestseller. Well, great news. Spartan Fit is coming out in three or four months. Go to Spartan Fit, the book. Get pre-registered. This book is going to give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to crush it in fitness and in health. How to eat, how to train, how to clean up your life. I know you want it because I talk to millions of you around the globe across 30 countries. I'm here in China right now. Believe it or not, I got people listening and eating healthy and dropping the chopsticks and getting rid of the junk food. So it works. Spartan Fit the book. Get pre-registered. Pre-order now at SpartanFitBook.com and save 25% with the code FIT25. We're in China. We've got some Americans here, some people from, from Europe, some Europeans. Uh, they were from all different cultures. Um, can they learn the same way? Does that make sense? Language is only a tool, but human nature, it's very similar. The makeup, the constitution of a human body is the same. And human nature, in historical terms, present and future, still very much the same because evolution has not happened in terms of our human nature. So when we study this kind of teachings, it is very, very um, user friendly and it, it works across board of all nationalities because human nature has no boundaries. And, and um, you talked about purposeful suffering where, where you kind of shine a light on the obstacles here. Um, do kids rebel at all? Does that make kids uncomfortable? Or does it make parents uncomfortable? He said, actually, uh, the two depends on the type of uh, problems that we talk about. There's certain type of problems that needs to, to be highlighted so everybody can share and discuss. That is, then when you open it up, then it will transform the energy. It will transform the whole whole obstacle or the problem, and which is a yang in Chinese Tai Chi is a yang energy that's active it outward. Where there are certain problems that needs cannot be exposed. It needs time to work just one on one and let them resolve slowly. And this is the yin problem. So this would might take a longer time. It cannot be resolved just by by highlighting or, or, or revealing out so it really depends it yin and yang problems it's true in the spartan race we have obstacles that take a long time to overcome and we have short <laughs> easy obstacles so yeah that makes that makes perfect sense he said we work together yes, <laughs> yes. we do that perfect. Finally, finally. Perfect. 
so first of all, I just want to mention that uh, anyone else who might have been a little confused by that, Marion explained to me that um, she shortened the segments uh, of Jinky Lin speaking so that we wouldn't have to listen to something we didn't understand, and then did the whole portion of the translator. So if anyone thought the translator was making stuff up, like yeah. I did it first before Mary explained yeah. it to me. <laughs> Mary explained the secrets of how you actually edit these things. Um, that I thought she was just showing off to show how smart she was. <laughs> that really clarified it for me. Fire but that said, guys, um, spirit, amongst what you did here, what really jumped out at you? Pretty much everything. I mean, can you imagine being able to learn where they take you from like the wisdom of the sages of the ancients to like the physical Tai Chi of your inner body to the agriculture and what you take from Mother Earth you have to give back to the understanding the ecology and the cycle of life. I mean, for all the papers I wrote for my master's in education at, at for <laughs> at Cornell with all those <laughs> smart people. <laughs> uh, that's a joke. From, uh, now, now I get to look smart in another podcast. Um, anyways, uh, no, but seriously, I mean, like the, the way that they frame their curriculum it just honors everything that i would want to be a part of that i would want kids to learn i think it's spectacular and, and I, I didn't even realize a school like that existed yeah. and they're basing the, this on five thousand year old texts you know yeah, wisdom yeah. so that true mastery not just sort of the knowledge that we have today the stuff that's out on the internet it's classic education right but i mean for us we just think we're here in the united states maybe that's 100 years for you maybe it's 500 or something again you're going back five thousand years yeah. but I mean, if you go to any of those ancient texts whether it's you know in uh, Arabic languages, Sanskrit, you know, the Indian languages or Chinese, you know, there's a lot of sort of basing of systems, architecture, life forces, medicine, putting it all together, like you say, with ecology and, and uh, believing on a more spiritual and energetic journey through life. You, you look at almost any discipline and, you know, you think back to um, societies so long ago that were so advanced. You think about, um, for example, the, the, I can't remember if it was the Greeks or the Romans. I guess it was Romans who had the aqueduct system. Mm -hmm. Thousands of years, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before anyone else did. And um, so I do think that as we go back to those old texts, and like you say, in all these different traditions, there is great wisdom there. And some of it we're just relearning now, and other has survived through through the years. But um, really cool, and I, one thing I love about this podcast is that it's not all from the same area. You know, Some are athletes, some are business people. And here's somebody who's um, teaching ancient wisdoms from a completely different culture and yet it's all still applicable it's all still something that you know our listeners and our watchers can go and apply it to their lives so i just i'm curious what what would you each say is is one specific thing you took from that interview that you'd say this is something that you can immediately go and apply to your life that you know when she was talking about the problem solving they're talking about helicopter parenting and instead of just considering it uh, a problem that belongs to the child mm -hmm. they take the problem as a as a yeah as a school and sit down with the parents and discuss the, the way to solve it. And I think that's a really important way of actually looking at problem solving if that's, you know, at college, in business or in your own home life or, or you know, sport in whichever way is actually not focusing necessarily on the problem but finding a solution. No. Yeah, I agree. My, mine would be that when we talked about the, that the human nature hasn't evolved. That the basics, again, this goes back to classic being 5,000 years <laughs> old, that we just had those types of things haven't changed. So what was relevant then is still relevant now. Yeah. And why we've had societal changes, though, with not basic urges, basic functions, if you will, of a human haven't changed at all. Sure. So what they knew then is applicable now. And, and mm -hmm. I think we forget that. I think whatever the new shiny bright object is, we like to always chase it, right? And whatever people know now, I don't. even younger generations, re routinely, you know, whatever, me, the son, whatever, you, you discount the last one mm -hmm. because now you know better. You know something new. You've, you've got more information. Well, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's what she says. Um, human nature is unchanged by evolution. Yeah. That all of those sort of balances of spirituality and the physical are, are, are still relevant today. Absolutely. I, I mean, my, my takeaway is just the overall concept of like this deep ecological, whole systems, holistic model of how they're framing education. I mean, this in a sense is mimicking natural ecosystems. It's working with nature rather than against it. It's saying like human nature is intrinsically part of the environment around you. And to honor that, you need to honor your physical, your mental how you caretake and tend to your land, what's going in you, what's mm -hmm. coming out of you, how you create a closed loop system around your body. And when you scaffold that and you teach caretaking, you teach stewardship to kids so that they're stewarding their mind and their body and their earth, 
then you're making beautiful humans and then they're spartans they're whatever they're they're conscious human beings that are strong in mind and spirit and knowledge and skill and I'm gonna go pay that school a visit. So, uh. yeah, and, then, and then earlier you were talking about rambling and every so often you just pull off something perfect like that. That was genius, I really appreciated that. Thank you for listening to another epic story of success. We hope you enjoy the episode. To find more show notes, audio and video, please visit us at spartanuppodcast.com slash 095. The Spartan Up Podcast is brought to you by Spartan. To find a race near you, visit spartan.com. What are you doing, Joe? Doing hard work. There's no, nothing, nothing good happens in life without hard work. What are you doing? Where are you here, Joe? I am in China, planting trees. Circle of life. Oh, wow. Circle of life. But I can't see you, though. Does she want to make, um, does she want to bring the dirt all around or no? Yeah, uh, about Chenbu Fang Fang Qi. Tai Ping, Na Ping. Uh huh. He says, okay. It's okay. She would do the job better. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs>